the rumors are that Diddy was running some kind of Epstein type deal where he was filming everybody. Right. The first street guy that really got on, you know, I'm talking about the guy doing crime in the streets that became a television guy. And everyone knew he was a celebrity, had fancy oh, wow. cars. That was the first. This is all. There has been negative propaganda put out about me. That's not true. At that time, Puff was the biggest guy in the world. You know, you couldn't even get in this party. So the way I would get in this party is I showed up with him. Mike Tyson has come forward with explosive details about the secret parties hosted by Diddy, shedding light on the darker aspects of fame and the hidden realities behind the glamorous facade of celebrity gatherings. Hey, Puffy, help me out, you know. <laughs> That's, I, I mean, I, that's the first, that's the first I, I've heard about that. That's great, though. That's great. I, I believe yeah. so, yeah. yeah. Tyson, known for his straightforwardness and no-holds-barred attitude, doesn't just scratch the surface, but dives deep into the core of the issue, exposing the unsettling truth that many have suspected, but few have dared to confirm. Before he was, um, Diddy, I knew him for a long time. When I, when I first became champ, I knew him. I remember him. He used to have crates when he used to have my after parties and stuff. At first glance, the parties thrown by Diddy appeared to be the pinnacle of success and opulence, a place where the elite of the music and entertainment worlds converge to celebrate their achievements. However, according to Tyson, beneath the veneer of extravagance and celebration lurked a far more troubling reality. These gatherings, he claims, were not just about music networking and RRY, but served as a backdrop for practices and behaviors that would shock the public. Also, when they were throwing parties, I mean, this him. is when he was the CEO founder of Bad Boy. No, I don't Big think Hit. he was Bad Boy yet. No, he really? wasn't him, Damon Dash, and all those guys. They weren't. They weren't on yet. I was. The, I was like the first street guy that really got. On. Tyson recounts his experience as attending these high-profile events, where the glittering lights and pulsating beats masked a world of manipulation, exploitation, and hidden agendas. He speaks of an environment where young and impressionable individuals were often preyed upon lured by promises of fame and fortune only to find themselves caught in a web of deceit and coercion, shedding more light on these shady parties. Hear what Jamie Foxx has to say about it. Um, Puff is the biggest guy in the world. You know, you couldn't even get in this party. So the way I would get in this party is I show up with a camp. Don't Fox in that camp. What? Puff's in there. <laughs> so, it's kind of, I'm like, damn, it's crazy now. Huh? So what I did was, I would show up to the party in my little uh, in a little town car. There's town, you know. I grabbed my town car so I could skirt. Puff the SUVs and the road, and the Bentleys, the whole night. He get out. I get out too with a camera, the big cannon. Like yo, Puff, I should document this shit, right? <laughs> yo, what's up, Playboy? <laughs> what, what, what you talking about? I said, no, I should get this, man. You finds for the whole night. He says, uh, yeah, let him through. Meanwhile, one of the most harrowing aspects of Tyson's revelation is the culture of silence that surrounds these parties. The fear of retribution, the allure of fame, and the power dynamics at play create a situation where few are willing to speak out. And many are compelled to turn a blind eye to the transgressions occurring right before their eyes. Tyson, however, breaks this silence, calling attention to the need for accountability and the protection of those who are most vulnerable. Tyson's insights also touch upon the role of power and influence in perpetuating these dark truths. He highlights how individuals at the top like Diddy wield their influence to create an environment where normal roles don't seem to apply and where their actions are often unchecked. This unchecked power Tyson implies is a core issue that allows the cycle of exploitation and manipulation to continue. And it just, it baffles me that you think you never, you got away from these people. You'll never see them again. You knew them when you were at the worst of your level or heard about them. And you're not the only one God had his hand on. These guys made them successful too. In addition, Tyson has revealed new evidence implicating Diddy and the demise of the renowned rapper Tupac. This revelation has reignited intense speculation surrounding Tupac's tragic death, known for his mesmerizing lyrical talent, Tupac captivated the world and remains one of the greatest musicians of his era. Tyson, who admired Tupac both for his musical genius and shared interest in boxing, expressed a desire for just five minutes alone with those responsible for his friend's murder, fueled by a longing for justice and revenge. Tupac, when he passed away, I was so curious. I said, what happened to this guy? Who was behind it? You know, the whole thing with the fight, you know, he's at your fight. He's going to get to the fight. I think you guys were supposed to spend, spend some time together. So somebody gets shot, I go to the hospital to see him, and then somebody else got killed. So I go to the funeral to, to see him, but the guy that went to the hospital is the guy that killed my friend I'm going to the funeral. In another interview, Tyson alleged that Diddy is homosexual and attempted to coerce him into embracing that lifestyle. The startling assertions by Tyson have stirred considerable astonishment, 
however Diddy dismisses the accusations, asserting that Tyson is delusional and unable to substantiate his claims. On the other hand, just days ago Homeland Security agents executed searches on properties in Beverly Hills and Miami owned by Diddy. This operation was part of a federal investigation into allegations of trafficking associated with their renowned music figure as per insiders briefed on the matter. The Grand Estate, where Diddy unveiled his latest album in the prior year, found itself swarmed with agents executing a search warrant. They meticulously collected evidence as part of an inquiry led by prosecutors from the Southern District of New York. Coincidentally during the search, two of Diddy's sons were briefly detained on the premises since 2023. Sean, calm known as Diddy, the hip-hop mogul who ventured into entrepreneurship, has found himself embroiled in a web of intimidation and trafficking accusations. The recent trade marks a significant escalation in the challenges to his celebrity status. Four women have stepped forward, filing civil lawsuits against Diddy alleging offenses ranging from trafficking a minor to mistreatment, and a slew of other things. Here's Joe Rogan's remarks on the recent developments surrounding Diddy. Who knows what's real? That's what Diddy's lawyers, I think, said. It was like, yeah, these are just trumped up charges. Not trumped up, I don't think they said that, but like, like full charges. Dude, when Homeland Security invades your house. You got problems. With dudes with guns and body armor. There's... Forget Someone said that they weren't there to take stuff, they were there to delete everything. The real people that were in there, you know. Oh, like that's funny. With Epstein. Oh, that's funny. However, numerous other legal battles loom on the horizon, with more expected to emerge as further revelation surface allegations against the music mogul continue to mount, with various celebrities accusing him of misconduct. Among them are notable figures such as Knight, Kanye West, and 50 Cent. Concurrently, speculation swirls regarding the possibility of Diddy facing imprisonment in the near future. In a frank conversation on the Club Shea podcast, comedian Cat Williams hinted at Diddy's impending exposure later this year. All of these, a big deal. Deviant is all catching hell in 2024, it's up for all of them. It don't matter if you diddy or whoever you is TGJ, any of the every all lies will be exposed. That's all the stand-up comic asserted that refusing. Diddy's offers is a must, going as far as to assert that he possesses evidence for everything disclosed during his conversation with host Shannon Sharp. Additionally, in another conversation, the comedian stated that he turned down $15 million from the music tycoon on four separate occasions. Now I've had to turn down $50, million four times, four times, just to protect my integrity, and that hole I was telling you about, right, Akas P did EB won the body, and you got to tell him no, you got to tell him no, I, I did, I did see, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you, that's why I can say them, so Frey, I need K, I need know you here, get you know, thank you sir, thank you, despite Diddy's denial of these assertions, there's no concrete evidence to substantiate the comedian's claims, though investigations into the lawsuits are ongoing inter- Interestingly, reports from media outlets suggest that firearms were discovered at both of Diddy's residences. Furthermore, agents from Homeland Security confiscated two of Diddy's phones before his departure to the Bahamas during the recent raids. Diddy addressed the situation by his attorney Aaron Dyer, expressing concern over the excessive use of military-style force during the execution of search warrants at Com's residence. He emphasized that such a display of force and hostility by authorities was unwarranted, particularly highlighting the treatment of his children and employees. Diddy's legal representative denied speculations about the rapper's detention, branding the entire episode as a witch hunt. Furthermore, it was stated that Diddy has been actively engaging with and cooperating with authorities since the commencement of the investigations this week. Federal agents apprehended Brendan Paul, whom authorities have identified as a courier for Diddy's illicit substances at Miami Airport. Paul 25 was allegedly found with contraband stashed in his luggage. Interestingly, his arrest coincided with a raid on Diddy's residence. Looking photos of Brendan Paul snapped in a South Florida jail Monday. Our departure from images shared on his public facing Facebook profile of life in the sphere of a celebrity Miami. Police arrested the 25 year old at the Miami airport as he was about to board a private jet with shot at comes, in addition to his alleged role as a drug mule. Paul is implicated in a lawsuit alongside Rodney Jones, accusing him of procuring and distributing firearms for Diddy Jones, claims to have witnessed Paul personally transporting illegal drugs on flights between Los Angeles, Miami, Virginia, the Caribbean, and London on multiple occasions.